Okay, so we are going to uh, perform one dimensional collision experiment. So we have here two cars. One car is this one. Let's say this is card one and this is card two. So to verify the one dimensional collision, we will give some momentum for card one and then we collide them. And after that, what's the momentum of uh, card one and what's the momentum of card two? So for the momentum, uh, we need mass of the car and the velocity of the car. So we have here a vernier motion sensor to measure the velocity of the car. And motion sensor can measure velocity of one car. So if you need to measure the velocity of another car, we have here photo gate. And in the photo gate, once it passed through, we can calculate, you can, we can measure the current uh, time, time it takes to pass this much length, this post, and then from the distance and time, we can calculate the uh, velocity or speed here. So for the measurement, let's take the mass of each, and then we'll start colliding the cards. So this is the mass of card one. It's 530.4 gram. And mm -hmm. so that number, the mass has to go to your uh, data sheet. That's the card one. And the mass of card two, this is card two. And its mass is 500. 20.2 gram and we also have this block uh, that has mass uh, 509.2 gram so first part of the experiment is a perfectly elastic collision so in a perfectly elastic collision, after the collision, both cars will move together. So we just need one uh, motion sensor. Okay. So I think this is inelastic collision, not the elastic for the part one. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. It is. It is perfectly inelastic collision. All right. So let's put the card one here, card two here. And then, and then I don't have the added mass. So whatever the mass of the cart one is the mass of M1. Whatever the mass of cart two is M2. And now I'm going to push this and we'll see how the velocity changes before and after the cut. So I'm just keep it here and then the table is already balanced. So I'm going to start collecting here. I think it's okay. Huh? Oh, okay. Okay. So, so now we can fit. So this part is the before collision. This is after collision. This is a change in the slope. So there is change in the velocity. And also this part is before collision and this part is after collision. So from the velocity versus, sorry, position versus time graph, we can find the velocity from the slope. So analyze the linear fit. The slope is 0.289 meter per second. 0.289 meter per that's the uh, velocity before and similarly for velocity after collision that comes out slope 0.122 meter per second and similarly we can get the velocity from velocity versus time graph so since we have certain time range, so we can take the average of that, average of that, and analyze 
statistics average mean which is 2.288 uh, here it is 0.289 very close so this number has to go to in the graph uh, one is position versus time graph another is velocity versus time this is for from velocity versus time, this is position versus time. So let's look at uh, velocity after collision. Again, analyze, take the statistics. So this is the point, uh, the mean. mean is 0.122. That's also 0 0.122 from position versus time. I see the closer. We are doing, still doing the same thing, perfectly inelastic. So I'm going to add mass here. So the mass of the car now is this is car one. Mass of mass of the car one is mass of the car empty car plus the mass of the block. Can you see? So that goes, uh, we are going to Number two second try. Mm -hmm. So mass of two is still same. Mass of car two. So, so I'm going to do the same thing. Right here, you see. Okay. All right, so we need to analyze in the same way, but we need to change this time range so that we get the right there okay so here uh, velocity from the slope it is 0.36 meter per second before collision from velocity versus time the average velocity is before collision is 0.367 so it's pretty close Again, for after collision, uh, slope is 0 0.23 and from velocity versus time graph, it's 0.229. So those number also have to go in this uh, data sheet for second try. So we will, I will repeat this again for the third try. And in this trial, so I'm going to put the car, the, the load, in a second car. Car two. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so let's start again. So let's look at the uh, velocities again. I need to change this range because the time it collided before is different from previous one. So here, velocity before collision from the slope of position versus time is 0.36 meter per second. From velocity versus time, the mean is 0.368. And after collision from position versus time is 0.113, if you want. 
and from velocity versus time, it is uh, 0.114. Okay. So in the third trial, so rest you have to calculate, like take the average and from the mass, calculate the momentum before collision. And again for the after collision, calculate the average velocity and momentum after the collision, this is from your theoretical result calculation. Uh, I mean, this is from experimental and this is from theory. Theory means if you know the mass and if you know the velocity before collision, what would be the final velocity? And and compare with this two. Compare with these two theoretical prediction and the experimental observed and find what is the percentage change. And also look at the questions here. You have to answer all these questions. So this will, this ends the first part. Can you explain how the two part stick together? We stick together. For the inelastic collision, uh, car they both have to go together. So in, in this car there are velcro here and then also opposite velcro here, something like a zipper attached in the coat or jacket. So, so they, once you collide they stick together. Make it inelastic. 